So welcome to our, for some of you, you've been here since the beginning of this circle. So welcome to our sixth week of this mindfulness meditation circle. And our gathering for this, this week aligns with the tale of the world's creation, that we're in six, in week six of creating this space and this whole world that exists for 30 minutes each week. And next week will be our seventh and we'll take a Shabbat, a rest. Um, technically it will be a break for Memorial Day, but I'd like to this morning also look at it as a Shabbat and a seventh week in our cycle of practice. Um, and by complete coincidence, but we can find some meaning in it. It also lines up with the seven week journey from Passover to Shavuot. And this for our people that we've talked about before is it's a sacred time in the mythology of our people. And it's a time of possibility for growth of character and connection. And it ends in Shavuot, which is a holiday that that celebrates the giving of Torah at Sinai, but it was also something of a practical holiday. It celebrated the first fruits of the harvest. It's an agricultural holiday at its root. So this morning, I'd like you to just invite you to consider the fruits of your labor these past six weeks. Not only here together in our mindfulness practice and this circle, but just in the whole experience of living an entirely different pace of life in this time in our city, in our country, in our worlds, and in our consciousness. Um, I'm not sure about you, but <laughs> even while remaining healthy during this period of quarantine, my body has been impacted by the changes to routine, um, and rhythm, and I, I see some people nodding, perhaps their bodies have also been impacted by it. Um, the toll of sitting in weird positions, in homemade offices, not walking as much or walking differently is being felt. Um, and sometimes there are unwelcome changes um, that we don't even notice. Um, and personally, I I didn't notice the toll of these physical changes until I recently completely injured my back, um, just trying to change the sheets on a bunk bed, um, which is not an, the easiest thing to do in the world in the first place. Um, but it shouldn't have resulted in my like complete lack of mobility for days uh, and needing to start physical therapy. I'm fine. But what I took from this is the importance of noticing the subtle changes and, and heeding them. And some changes might be welcome, like the clean sheet on that kid's bed, but others might point us to new consciousness and awareness of the impacts of our experience on our body and our mind and our spirit. And if we don't allow ourselves to notice these small and subtle changes, we might miss treasures in our growth. Or on the other hand, we might find ourselves off course and only notice when the changes trigger an extreme reaction, or in my case, land me with frozen peas strapped to my back for days. So in this circle today, these are our first fruits. Any of those changes, both painful and productive, that have happened for you over the past six, seven, eight weeks. Uh, a favorite professor told me once that every experience you have will change you, whether you sought out for it to change you or not. And the question is whether you'll notice and what you'll do with the change. So I'm going to ask you right now to do nothing new with your body, to actually freeze in whatever position you started this call in, whatever position your body naturally found as I was blabbering along. So just notice 
the position your body entered all on its own and settle into noticing without changing a thing the the position your body has taken you could notice the position of your legs and what muscles are engaged just trying to maintain that position what sensations are there in your hips and sit bones and is there pain or tension or tightness or numbness just notice it there's no need to change it or fix it just whatever position you found it got you to this place but notice what it takes to to maintain it and what you're what you're doing with your body as you sit just bring all those sensations into mind and try not to change anything. I know it's hard as we notice things in our body, we might want to shift and, and change it up, but for now, just kind of let it be and see if you notice it. And you can do the same. You can move from your legs and your thighs, your calves and your feet and take notice of what position your other limbs are in your arms or your hands. Um, I'm noticing mine are moving a lot on their own. Um, you might notice that yours are clasping a coffee cup or a pen, or maybe your arms are crossed. Just notice whatever, whatever position all those pieces have found. And notice if there's an angle, to your wrists, to your forearms. You can even take note of your armpits. Is there space for air to get in or are your arms clasped sort of at your sides? There's no need to change it. And notice if you do have the desire to move even just when you notice it. And then move to the, the core of your body, kind of first to your spine. And just notice if this position you found yourself in brings an angle or a curve to your back. Is it straight? Are you leaning to one side? And notice just what muscles are engaged in that position, if any. Is anything twisted, tense? Just notice it. Notice whether your shoulders are more back or more forward. Is your head leaning forward in any way? Just notice this natural position you found yourself in. Praise Adonai, source of life and consciousness, who is praised. Praised is Adonai, who is to be praised for all time. So now that you've noticed your status quo, the posture that you just landed in this morning, 
I invite you to now bring some gentle movement and change to each part of your body, starting with your feet and legs. Just notice what movement you start with. You could first start by crossing or uncrossing your legs, lifting them, straightening them. Could move your legs in and out like butterflies' wings. Or side to side as if you were skiing. And just give them a moment to move whatever feels right to you. Notice how it feels as you experiment. What other parts of your body are impacted just by moving your legs in a different way? What's been engaged that hasn't been engaged before? If you do something that doesn't feel so good, just notice it. Notice how it feels. You don't have to do it again. And when you feel ready, you feel like your legs have woken up a little bit, go ahead and settle them into a wakeful posture. You can plant your feet on the ground if you can to feel the firmness of the earth or the floor beneath you. And once you've done that movement with your legs, move your consciousness again to your back and core bringing some movement to these parts of your body as well. Just awaken them as you begin to make some movement, perhaps curving, uncurving your back, shifting from side to side, or even seeing if a gentle twist awakens some muscles. Notice your legs might have to move in order to make this possible. No one piece of your body can do some of these things alone. And just notice how it feels to transition from stillness to movement in these body parts. And just take note again if there's discomfort or pleasant feelings, even a burning sensation if you're repeating certain movements over and over. And then finally, move from that movement back to stillness. Settle your core and your back into a posture that feels awake and confident for you and sustainable for a period of time. Then bring your arms into movement as well. Just notice the first thing you do when you bring them into movement whether it's reaching out to the side. I started flapping mine in front of me, kind of like a chicken. See if you can move all of the pieces that make up the whole of your arm. From forearm to upper arm. all the way down to your hands and your fingers, moving joint by joint, engaging each piece of this whole. Notice if, if you hear sounds or feel things that are comfortable or uncomfortable, just notice. 
And then bring your arms and lift up if you can, as if you were grabbing an apple off of a tree. And notice how as you do this movement, mostly with your arms, the rest of your body is supporting you and making it possible. You need all of yourself to do this one thing. Notice how that movement, as you come back to stillness, how that movement reverberates in your shoulders, or your chest, how it feels in each part of your body. Just take some time now to revisit any part of your body that you think needs some extra waking up today. Just kind of give it some, some extra move, gentle movement. And finally, you can keep doing that as long as it feels good or waking up. And when you're ready, you can settle into our more routine mindful posture. And if you haven't already, you can close your eyes as we look inward. And this time, go ahead and straighten your back in a way that feels comfortable to you. Giving yourself whatever support you need. Feet grounded on the floor. You might actually find that wakeful involves standing or even laying down. If you can be in awareness of, of your body that way and support it at the same time. Just find whatever position that is for you. And no matter which position works for you, if you can imagine that a string is extending from your head up, up to the ceiling. As you take up your full height creating plenty of space between all the parts of your spine and neck. As you expand in this way, notice if there's any tension in your face, your jaw or brow bone. And if you can, release it. And now that you've found this posture, noticed how it feels to be in stillness again after movement. Bring your attention to your breath. There's no need to change its rhythm unless it feels good to you to do a nice big cleansing breath. But otherwise just notice how your breath flows in and out of your body.
Notice it as it enters and exits your nose. Even if you can, notice the sensation of the breath as it moves inside your nose, how it feels as its force moves through that small space. Draw your attention to your chest. If you can feel the rise and the fall. The emptying and the filling of other parts of your body as you breathe. Just being in this moment with your breath. To take in this moment, this new posture you've created for yourself. Remind yourself you brought yourself to this moment through both movement and stillness. You created this moment with help, but you created it all the same. And so as you sit here, I invite you to bring to mind something small that you've created. If you can, the smallest thing that you've created can be anything. Whatever popped into your mind when I asked you to imagine, just, just go with that. And notice what happens as you imagine this creation this thing that you made? Does it bring a smile to your face? Satisfaction? Recall the labors of creating it. What did you have to manipulate or change to bring it about? And who helped you? And now bring to mind something that feels big that you created. Even if it's something that started small and eventually got big. Recall the labors of creating it, of growing it. Remember for this thing too, what did you have to manipulate or change to bring it about? Who helped you? Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, yotzer or uvarei choshech, ose shalom uvarei et hakol. Baruch ata Adonai yotzer hameorot. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, 
power of all things, who forms light and creates darkness, who makes peace and creates all things. Blessed are you, Adonai, who forms light. As you release the images of your own creations from your mind, bring your attention back to your body and your breath. In that position you found yourself in. And if you can, zoom out and see yourself from the outside sitting in this posture in whatever room you're in. Just watch yourself. And now if you can zoom out further to imagine yourself floating above your apartment or your house at this moment and gazing upon this place where you are. What is still? What is moving? And then zoom out further as if you were floating or flying over the city or area that you're in. And notice what you see as you float. What colors? What's moving and what is still? And imagine yourself as a piece of that whole as you sit in this moment. And now zoom out a little further, if you can, as if you were looking at the earth from afar, orbiting it. Imagine yourself as a piece of this wholeness. And as you look, see before you the continents merging or separating, the seas rearranging themselves as if time is passing before your eyes. Imagine yourself as a piece, both small and big, of this wholeness as we chant together the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Pay attention, Israel. The holiness that you already know is oneness. And the oneness endures forever. This morning we've moved from stillness to movement and back again reflected on our creations and change as we approach Shavuot, this moment of celebrating our first fruits. So as you leave today, I invite you just privately, you can chat just to me. You don't have to share it with anyone else. What you have learned what growth has taken place for you over this period of time, over the past six weeks, 
for this time in quarantine. What and how has this experience changed you? So if you chat it to me privately, I'll keep it to myself, but sometimes it's, it's helpful to bring to consciousness and awareness and share with another the changes that have taken place. So I invite you to open your eyes. You can make eye contact with someone else on the screen knowing that you went through this with others and had this experience this morning with others. We created this space together. And I wish you a Shavua Tov, a good week. And I will share with you the recordings of all of our previous sessions. I'll send you the link. And then next Monday, if you want to take time for yourself to meditate, you're welcome to use those um, or do your own thing. Take a Shabbat for yourself. Thank you all for being here. I'll stay on for a little bit so I can catch your chats if you want to put in.